up. So today, we're talking about your first large print. Something like that. So today's video comes highly requested because a lot of times in other videos, that 40 by 60 canvas is in the background. It's a piece of the backdrop. And people ask me, hey, what's your advice about large printing? What settings should I use? What things should I look out for? So figured I'd make a video for you guys about what you should do with your first large print. And I know your first large photo, it can be pretty stressful, you know? It's a lot of money. It can easily get messed up if you do a few things wrong. But this video is so you can make as few mistakes as possible when it comes to this first large print that you're investing in. And I love large prints. I think they're an amazing investment. They look great in your house. Love that one. We got this one right here. I'll go ahead and take this down too so I can show you guys Oh yeah, here's another one. Got this one hanging over my mantle. I gotta replace this one though because it's like not a good mix of nature and cityscape, but we're getting there. But the first thing we gotta talk about when it comes to these large prints is what goes on in the computer. Your editing process as well as your exporting process can make or break how the photo looks once it's printed, especially when it's printed large. Even the smallest mistakes can come up huge in a large print. But I got an important question for you. What do you do when you start making these large prints? You have them in your home, you share them on social media, and people start asking that important question where can I get my own print? And you don't have an answer for them. That is why you need Squarespace. Squarespace is the sponsor of today's video. Squarespace is what I built EvanRamp.com on. I use it every single day as my own website for my photography business. I sell prints through Squarespace and you can too if you need a place to be selling your work if you're gonna be printing your work. So go to www.squarespace.com backslash Evan Ramp. Start your free trial today. Get 10% off of your first purchase. Here's what's so crazy about Squarespace. In the amount of time that it takes your print to get processed by your printing lab, let's say you send your print out and it takes three days to get delivered. In that three days, you could build an incredible, amazing website using all of Squarespace's templates. It's so simple. All you gotta do is drag and drop, type into these templates. They're easily customizable and they're great to start your own unique internet photography business. So once you start printing your photo, you need a website to house and share those photos and give people the opportunity to have those prints in their house. So head over to www.squarespace.com backslash Evan Ramp. Start your free trial today and get that 10% off. But let's get into Lightroom, what you need to do to make sure your print is the highest quality. So there's really two things that I look out for when it comes to post-processing, my clarity meter and my sharpening meter. And what I do to check these things is I zoom my photo into a one by one crop and I check out what the quality of the image looks like at this crop factor. And if there's a lot of noise, if there's too much noise, if I think it's looking choppy and chunky because there's too much sharpening or too much clarity, I drop both of these things back. Here's the big takeaway. Any small mistake on the screen is going to be a large mistake on a large canvas. Here's a quick story for you. I printed this 40 by 60 for a gallery back in 2015. And I combed through this photo, I made sure I removed all the dust, any imperfection in the sky of this photo. And I thought I had every single piece of dust removed until I got this 40 by 60 canvas in the mail and I noticed one minor speck of dust in the top left corner. It was huge, but on screen, it was very small. This is an error that I made that seemed like a small error on my computer screen that was a very large error in a large print. Now let's talk about your export settings. Now when you export this photo, there's a few things you wanna look out for. So the first thing is resolution. I recommend 300, that's pretty much the standard. It's what most people use with printing. If you really want, you can deep dive and learn more about that on your own, but 300 is what I recommend you set that to. Now quality, you wanna make sure your quality is set to 100. Obviously 100 is best, you want your quality at 100. So make sure nothing is checked over there. You also don't want this image resized at all. You want it to export at its full size. So make sure you have no resizing checked. The last thing you wanna look out for is your color space. So color space is one of those topics that could have its own separate 10 minute video. It's pretty complicated and there's a lot of information to learn and I'm not gonna cover it today, but I strongly recommend you research it, maybe go watch some other YouTube videos so you can understand color space. Now here's what you need to know for the sake of your large print. You just need to understand there's two separate color spaces. There's sRGB and Adobe RGB. And you need to know which color space your printer is using. And one way you can find that out is by calling them and asking, hey, do you recommend I export my file in sRGB or Adobe RGB. Or if you're sending these prints off via the internet, you know, like an online service, there will typically be a checkbox that says, 
are you using in Adobe Color Space, in Adobe RGB? I'll let you do your own research and figure out which color space you wanna export the photo in, which one you think will work better with your particular photo. All I want you to take away from this section of the video is understanding there are two separate color spaces that you can use and you wanna make sure that you are using the right one for the printer or the lab that your photo will eventually be printed at. And if you have any questions on that, call the printing lab or printing service you're using. They'll tell you exactly what you need to know. All right, so we got everything right on the computer. You now have this file that is ready to be printed. There are no mistakes gonna be perfect. But what material are you gonna print that photo on? The material you print your photo on is all about your preference as a photographer. It's important to remember that the material you print your photo on can actually enhance the way the photo looks on the wall. So me personally, in the past, I have used canvas. I'm kind of moving away from canvas for a few reasons, which I'll explain. But one thing that I really like about canvas, I like how simple they are. You get this one inch of clearing off the wall, and because it's wrapped, you kind of have this nice, never ending look. So the photo is here, and then it rolls nicely onto the corner against the wall, and everything kind of works together, almost like a painting. That's why I like these so much. Also like how simple they are to move. You can just grab the frame right here or right here. It's an open back and then you have your wire hanger right here, which is in my opinion, one of the most simple ways you can hang a photo is on a wire. So while I do really enjoy the way canvas looks on the wall, there are a few drawbacks. They are very expensive to print and also they can be a little bit fragile. I don't think photos are really meant to be printed on canvas. So something as simple as bumping this corner against the wall could really impact the print and cause some damage up top. They're pretty fragile and that's kind of why I'm moving away from them in the future. So besides canvas, there's a bunch of other materials out there you can use. You have metal, you have wood, you have paper prints that are mounted to acrylics so there's like a see-through layer on top. Metal photos are great for things like cityscapes or photos that are very sharp and crisp and punchy. The metal actually intensifies that look of the photo. The material that you use to print your photo can actually enhance how it looks on the wall. So a cityscape printed on normal luster photo, it might still look really good but it might look even better and have more of an effect and an impact if it's printed on metal if that is your preference. Some other things that you can look into as well, if you wanna print the photo on paper, you could go with your traditional luster or matte paper. Now, if you choose to go with the paper printing route, be aware there are a few options out there. You can get your paper print mounted to something like this. This is just a pretty thin sheet of plastic. Another great material that people use is gator board. You can get gator board that's about this thick, like an inch thick, mount your paper printed photo to it, and then you can actually build mounts off the gator board so it can sit on your wall like a canvas. I think that's something I'm gonna experiment with more in the future, but one great thing about getting your paper print mounted to a material like this, obviously it becomes more durable, you don't have to worry about bending it, and if you're selling one of these photos to a client, it makes them so much easier to ship. I've had so many people I've shipped a loose paper print to, even though I tape it down, I make sure it's perfect and there's no damage during shipping, it gets damaged when they are unwrapping it because all it takes is one slip, your photo is now bent, but when it's mounted, it's a lot easier to travel with, to give the clients to ship, and it's just a little bit more durable. So I'm a big fan of these mounted materials like this. All right, so we got our photo exported. We have chose the perfect material to print our photo on. Now we gotta figure out the last two steps. The first is what size we want to print our photo. And it's always good to have an idea in your head of what size you want to print a photo, but here is what you need to know. When you crop your photo in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever application you're using, you want to crop that photo to the proper crop before you send it out to your printer or whatever. Let's say you're exporting a photo that you want to be 20 by 20 when it's printed on a large canvas. That means your photo aspect ratio when you crop it needs to be one by one before you export. It's pretty simple stuff. You just want to make sure you crop your photo to the same aspect ratio as the print that you'll be making. The second thing you have to consider is the size of the particular print. Now, everyone has a size in mind, but an important thing to check is will the megapixels of your camera hold up and give you a good print at the size you're looking for? Now, this can be super complicated. You can really go in depth with something like this. You can resize your photos, but I wanted to keep this video as simple as possible, so I found a great article for you guys. It is by Improved Photography. They have this awesome chart that gives you an 
an idea of the print quality of an image based on the megapixel size of the camera. The chart they have gives you a clear understanding of what size you can print your photo with these red X's, yellow check marks, and green check marks. Now my canvases, this 40 by 60, all the ones I showed to you today, they were shot on two different cameras. One was my Nikon D810, one was my Nikon D610. And the Nikon 610 is about 24 megapixels, and the 810 shot this photo right here, I think it's 36 megapixels. Both of those cameras printed 40 by 60 canvases completely fine with no issue. I was very happy with the image qualities. In my opinion, most modern digital cameras right now, they have enough megapixel resolution to at least get a 20 by 30 print made with almost every photo. But last but not least, you wanna make sure you're doing everything right in camera so that photo is tack sharp and perfect when you export it so you can get the best result during printing. So there we go, that is it for today's video. A lot of information packed into this one and we could have gone so much deeper. Printing is one of those things that you could do a full one day workshop on and still not cover every potential thing. So I hope this video accomplished my goal and gave you that basic rundown of everything you need to know when you're getting started with your first large prints. Get out there, make some large prints, do some other research, look into specifics about your camera, the megapixels of your camera, dots per inch, the printing lab you're using, what I talked about, about RGB versus Adobe RGB, all that stuff. Printing is one of those things you can dive super deep on, and it's a lot of fun, and I recommend you do it. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button for more photography videos. I'll see you guys next time.